Welcome to PhD in Science. In today's video, I will cover homologous, analogous, and vestigial structures. Feel free to skip to the part that you are interested in and pause or rewind to the step that you didn't quite catch. If you don't understand something, feel free to comment below and I will be more than happy to answer. Without further ado, let's get started. Homologous structures. Tissue structures or organs that show similar anatomical features are homologous structures, but do not generally serve the same function. Such like structures also evolved from a common ancestor. Example would be humans, whales, crocodiles, cats, birds, and bats for them all have the same arrangement of bones, hence they are considered homologous structures. Even though bones such as the humerus, so the upper arm, ulna and radius, the forearm, carpals, so the wrists, the metacarpals, the hand, and phalanges, so the fingers, are present in human beings. These structures also occur in other species as similar bones in shape adapted to the environment, suggesting that these animals have had a common ancestor. Such identical structures are doubtful to have evolved independently within every species, and it is more probable that the basic bone arrangement had been present in a common ancestor of humans, whales, crocodiles, cats, birds, and bats, etc. before. Comparing homologous structures, one can see that they are more beneficially adapted to the environment of each species induced by natural selection. Analogous structures are structures, tissues, or organs which do not possess the same or similar anatomical characteristics, but perform the same function. These structures did not evolve from one common ancestor, but from another independently. They evolved differently because the organisms lived under identical conditions or encountered similar selection pressures. In unrelated species, Analogous structures are structures that are identical. The structures are identical because they evolved to have the same function, not because they descended from a common ancestor. As an example of analogous features, both the arctic fox and a type of arctic bird undergo seasonal color changes. Depending on which climate is present, the color changes from dark to white. This mutual trait does not reflect common ancestry. The last shared ancestor of the fox and ptarmigan is unlikely to have changed color with the seasons. Instead, because of similar selective pressures, this function was preferred separately in both organisms to maximize their ability to survive. That is, the tendency to turn to light coloration in winter, genetically determined, allowed both foxes and ptarmigans to live and reproduce in the land of icy winters and predators. Analogous structures are also proof for evolution, not showing the structures shared by organisms inherited from a common ancestor, but rather demonstrate that similar selective pressures can produce similar adaptations or beneficial characteristics. Structures, tissues, or organs which no longer serve the same purpose are referred to as vestigial structures. They can still be useful for a species to survive, despite the fact that they are no longer operating. In addition, vestigial structures are often the product of mutation, as the protein or multiple proteins required for the functioning of the structure, a tissue or organ, are no longer created. Human vestigial structures include the wisdom teeth, so the third molars, the rudimentary ear muscles, the cosigeal tail, vertebrae, as well as the vermiform appendix. The third molar is a solid tooth that is used to eat hard food, such as raw meat that cannot be processed, and cooking the meat on fire to make the uh, meat easier to consume. Once essential for an early human diet of roots, leaves, meat, and nuts, Wisdom teeth are no longer necessary. Humans are preparing food today by softening it, allowing us to cut the food with utensils. In order to capture the sound more effectively, 
rudimentary ear muscles are weak muscles that would once have enabled evolutionary ancestors to move their ears. The muscles, however, are not capable of musing much today, thus being useless. In general, the vestigiality assessment must be based on a comparison of homologous features in similar species. Vestigial structures occur through normal evolutionary processes, typically through the loss of function of a feature that, when it loses its value in a changing environment, is no longer bound to positive selection pressures. When the role of these vestigial structures become definitely detrimental, the feature may be chosen against more desperately, but if the absence of the feature provides no benefit and its inclusion provides no downside, the feature may not be bred out by natural selection and survive through organisms. In other words, there is neither a harm nor an advantage of the presence of these structures. Useless features include certain patterns of behaviors, anatomical structures, as well as biochemical processes. In a given species, vestigial features may emerge, evolve, and survive or disappear successively at different stages during the organism's lifespan, ranging from being an embryo to late adulthood. That was it. I hope you have learned something new and would appreciate if you can use these videos to support your learning path. I do also have an Instagram and TikTok account where I will post short, concise clips of each topic.